Onana and Maguire to the rescue. They won. They won. Manchester United needed a win, a Champions League win. Uh, Ten Hag certainly needed it, and he got it. One goal to nil against uh, Copenhagen in uh, the Champions League at Old Trafford last night. Maguire got the goal. Onana got the penalty save. So it all worked out for the red half of Manchester last night. Um, Danny, what was that last night? Was it a night of redemption at Old Trafford? Maguire and Onana, the heroes. Who would have thought that would be the headline this morning? I think from Maguire's point of view, it was a great example of getting your head down, working hard and waiting for an opportunity that so many players don't want to do. The way he's conducted himself has been admirable. And I mean, you should he could argue it's the way you should, but not everyone does. So I was pleased for him. He's taken a lot of stick and he's, you know, he's back in the team and giving it a go. So, yeah, I thought that was... I mean, in terms of the keeper, he's just, you know, he saved the penalty, which is great for him. Might give him a bit of confidence. He's got a bit more to do. Yeah. But I think the more worrying thing was how difficult they found it to get over the line against a bang average team. Um they spared their blushes in injury time against Brentford. They've won by one goal at Sheffield United, who everyone have beaten reasonably comfortably. And um they've they've really scrambled over the line last night. So it was three, although, wins, three wins in the bounce. In fairness, in fairness to Sheffield United. Yeah, they have been both all right. Man City yeah. and Tottenham have scrambled across they, the line yeah, against true, them as well. True, true. I saw that as I was saying it, but yeah, you're right to pick me up on that. But but still, United of old would you'd think yeah. come on. But it's a win. But I think it's papered over the... Well, the results in a minute are papering over the cracks. The the glaring thing with Manchester United from a, a, a... Sitting from afar, if you like, is they are too easy to play against, to dominate the ball against and to make chances against. And against the best opposition in the Premier League, they're going to get done. And why is that? Why, why on earth are Manchester United too easy to play against? Well, how come they are? What's Ten Hag not done? Well, the technical organisation mainly, yeah, and then you've got the physical element, which is the right personnel in the right positions to do the yards to do the job, mm. and that might mean out wide not tracking fullbacks enough. That means in the middle of the park. I mean, how many times Ten Hag has to make substitutions at half time because he got the he got the tactics or the personnel wrong is worrying. Now, on a, on the flip side to that, the fact he's able to adapt quickly and, and sees it and does something about it and doesn't mind correcting a mistake so early, which is fine. Mourinho was brilliant at it in his early tenure at Chelsea. So I, I, it's, not, it's not a big thing. But the, the fact is that most games United play against half-decent opposition, they, they just look too easy to play against and, and concede too many chances. I mean, he didn't just save the penny. He made a brilliant save early in the second half. Um, they hit the post early on. They had other chances in the game, and this is a side really that should should be a comfortable victory. Yeah, you know. Top but, of the uh, I mean, we're talking team. like this so after they won, though, Danny, and they will say this morning, no doubt, Ten Hag would say this morning, uh, yeah, it's a win. Thanks. We well, move you on. you have to build momentum and confidence. You don't just go. You don't go from playing badly to to becoming a world beater in a couple of weeks. I get that, and it is a step in the right direction. But I'm I'm still looking at them and thinking, way off. Yeah, they were yeah. they were badly taken penalty away from a bit of a disaster. Yeah. I mean, that is the long, short and tall of it. Yeah, I mean, the headline is to the rescue. That yeah, says and, it all. And, and that's what goalkeepers are there to do. Yeah. Um, and and well, I was a great save. It was a, it was a save. I mean, I, I, when I was watching the game, I, 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 I thought he would miss because of the amount of time that was delayed between the penalty being given, people scratching the penalty spot. He'd just come on it. as well, the lad. Yeah, and so with all that in mind, but the most important thing for United is, is to get a win. And well, it keeps them in it. And to keep on winning games, however they win them. We'll build some confidence and some momentum. Um, again, it comes down to what you think Manchester United should be. Yeah, and of the, course, yeah. what we think Manchester United should be because we've been led by the nose for that for 30 years or certainly 25 of the 30-odd years that the Premier League has been um, uh, in existence is that they are, to some extent, the poster boys of the Premier League. They're not anymore. And this is a, a, a very challenging period for them in terms of the last 10 years and and there doesn't seem to be any bridging of the gap. Uh, the gap seems to be widening between the others that are going away from them for a whole variety of reasons. And yet the column inches, the expectation, the dictation, the you know the ownership credentials, yeah. all of these things come into play. Yet you've got half a billion pounds with a team on the pitch. I think the bit if you bring it forward, and even if you take away their dominance when under Fergie and all those things, and the expectancy expectation of the fans, if you just compare it to last season. 
there was there was an optimism around Old Trafford that they were progressing in the right way and they were going to move well, forward and not become initially more. There wasn't, was there? It was a disaster when they got spanked by Brentford. They got beat by Brighton. No, no, I'm on yeah. about at yeah. the end of the season, towards begin, the back end, beginning yeah. of this season. When what's the, happening to your surrogate son, Mason Mount? Well, <laughs> I, I would I would still have him. I'd have him in the team ahead of some of the others in terms of the legs and the energy that you need to be competitive. But they're getting away with it. We, in the last three games, I th- I think the problem is for United is the progression of the other teams they're trying to compete with is just too great for them. And and as we've talked about on this show, without repeating ourselves, the question is: Are United anywhere nearer than last season to trying to win the league and trying to win the and Champions are they? League? And, and are no, they? they're not nearer now. I mean, Ten Hag was appointed on April the twenty first, two thousand and twenty two. Yeah, and so- are you saying next to no progress? His first season was a, was something everybody thought was a good thing in terms of I know they lost some games and they weren't good away from home generally, but they moved they won a trophy and they got in Champions League football back. So I think that would say box ticked for the manager. Well done, first season. And then people expect progression. I don't see them being better any better at the moment than they were last season. If if anything, probably worse. But we seem to see the same problems. The descriptions last night from Paul Scholes and Rio Ferdinand. Marcus Rashford is less lacking confidence. Manchester United are easy to play against. Defensively, they're not where they need to be. Um, you know, and all of these things have been said. I mean, we watched this team. Was it against uh, Villarreal that they got knocked out of the Europa League? Um, or was it Seville? It was one of the two. Seville. Spanish, Seville. And, and I man, think yeah. people were just gobsmacked at the, at, the, at, the, at the... And from that moment on, United's performances weren't... Uh, where you know there was an expectation they could go and win that particular tournament, and they were poor mm. in losing that game. Got turned over, didn't they? Look, I don't know. I mean, it's a it, it's a it's a it's a ridiculously difficult job, and that's one of the factors that gets priced into the thinking or baked into the idea that United is is a job that's going to have to have an outcome attached to it. I know that we make this point, but in '86, when when Ferguson takes over from Ron Atkinson, a team that's won the FA Cup, and that's what they've been that's that's what they're only sort of memorable achievements during the sort of 16 year periods um, and then you land with Ferguson getting four or five years uh, uh, do you give this guy I mean, Ibrahimovic was talking about the other day in an interview with Piers Morgan and I made the point that he's had no experience of managing under this kind of scrutiny with some of these players the Ronaldo challenge for him managing an Ajax is one thing managing here is another and maybe you've got to give this guy an inordinate amount of time maybe United have got to be prepared to say that whatever the micro moment looks like, we've got a macro picture that is in three years' time we're going to be where we need to be and somehow, one or one way or another, the culture of Manchester United is going to be changed under this guy because they've become a Manchester United that accepts defeat, gets beat at home, seems to have a culture of players that don't respect the football club that they're playing for and think they have an entitlement to say what they want. And all of that seems to be a culture that underpins a football club that has great illusions about where it should be and delusions of the reality of what it's going to take to get there. He's learning on the job, and that's not his fault. That's because my point. He's learning on the job because he was he's never managed a club of, of this size and, and, and the attention given to him, and he's probably like, whoa. And he's had to deal with some really difficult situations. They probably didn't factor in when he mm. got, you know. N- nothing to do with him, by the way. So, so there, what, what there you are about this get... weekend then against Manchester City? Well... They've they proved last year on a one-off game they can beat Man City. They've got they've got outstanding talent. But I I mean they play Man City ten out of, they lose eight out of ten. That's how good City are and how much better they are. I think. Yeah, um, I mean the only factor in that game is it's a local derby. If you take yeah. it on form and performances of the well, size, City's while Man City yeah. haven't been great, no, Man City on form are, are far better side and will hand Manchester United their head. Yeah, but on the derby criteria where everything goes out of the window. You've got an opportunity to, to to give yourself a thought process. Actually, United can turn up and win this game, but really, when you when you take the emotion out of it and look at it logically, mm. they'll get beat up by Man City. The Man thing City is, the thing is, but I I think there's no point in United being hasty with it, even if the next few results don't go their way. I mean, ten. I don't think he's there yet. He's not. He's nowhere exactly. near yet. Ten, ten, he's, he's had some. He bad might be in- looking at the plank. He's not on it. No. He's certainly not walking. He's it. had some bad injuries and some difficult things to deal with. They get, I, if I was any, if I was in the hierarchy of United, I'd be looking at this season. Get to the end of the season. See where you're at. You know, I think it's crucial for them to be in the top four, Manchester United. If they fall out of the Champions League again, then th- that's failure. But were you expecting a lot more than what you're seeing at the yeah. moment? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Although, based on what? But, but what? Based on the signings. That? I, I thought the signing. Particularly signing's... who? Centre forward. Well, no, I like him. 
Yeah. I think he's going to be a hell of a player. But you need to play wingers. You need to put them um, in the box, don't you? Well, I, I just think you need to build relationships. It takes a bit of time sometimes. And I think it doesn't help when you've got um, Anthony on one side who's flattened to see even so predictable. That doesn't help. Yeah, you do need to. You're right. Some more balls in the box would be good. But I thought when the sign the sign is they made, let, let's also take into consideration. I mean, for for a few weeks, he was missing three of his back four continually. His, his first choice back four. When you're looking at Shaw, Wembasaka, and Martinez. Yeah, I mean it's Maguire to the rescue last night. Yeah, Lindelof was coming on at left back. You know, yeah. he's had some problems. So yeah. let's keep it realistic. But I, I still feel that when you watch them, which I have nearly every game from beginning of the season to now, they are far too easy to play against. And that is a mixture of the the tactical plan. The fit, the physicality of the players, and the willingness to do the work. Yeah. And the big problem in football is if you get players who don't face repercussions for not doing the basics and the work. And when I say work, I'm on about defending properly, not just running around, not covering distance. I'm on about yeah. staying on your feet, tracking runners, go give, give and goes, doing the basics. When there's no repercussions for the the more senior players in that side to not doing that, they'll get away with it. Okay, and well, that's they won why, last night. That's why Pep and Klopp are the best, because if you don't do it for them, you do not play. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.